but yeah, first and foremost, thank you for coming on the show. I really appreciate your time. And thanks uh, for having me. Yeah, of course. And uh, so you you were talking before that you were seeing patients. Are you so you are a medical doctor? Yeah, I'm a well, I'm a physical therapist. I'm a doctor Physi of physical therapy. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's kind of interesting. Like, wh like, what does your uh, day usually like consist of? Oh, uh, I mean, I see back to back uh, since COVID's happened. Mm -hmm. um, I we don't double book that much anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's, that's been kind of nice. But I mean, I'm just back to back all day long, every thirty minutes. So. Um, what kind of like what kind of things do you see as far as like um, the therapy? All ages, all diagnoses. Yeah, I'm just in an outpatient clinic, so I mean, mm -hmm. I treat babies and I treat elderly and I treat everything in between. So, what what, what are babies? Um, that's interesting. Like, uh, what mm -hmm. kind of what would you treat a baby for as far as torticollis, like mainly torticollis. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm not a pediatric PT or anything, but um you know, I'm in a small town, so something's better than nothing. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's pretty manageable, at, yeah. you know, at least if you catch it early and it's more positional and stuff. So it's more sure. education for the parents mainly, but yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So you say you're in a small town and, um, with you, you know, being into fitness and competing, um, how was the process when COVID hit, like as far as your training, because I've talked to a lot of people and, you know, some were able to sneak into certain gyms, others like couldn't do anything. And some people just never had a problem. Like I'm in Nashville, Tennessee, and yeah. we went, we went to like, small capacity but the gym's never really fully closed so how about you yeah um we didn't really um film anything during that time but we definitely were able to cheat because we have equipment um we actually have all the ultimate warriors old equipment out from arizona where he, when he had oh. a gym Wow! And at one point, my husband was going to start a gym, he got a really great deal on all that equipment, and it just never happened. So it's been at a warehouse and um, a select few people have keys to it. And so yeah, so we were, we were covered. Yeah. So do you, um, do you still train, excuse me, you still train, um, like using that equipment? Or do you train in the gym now? Yeah, a little bit of both. I mean, there's some really good equipment. Um, if you ever see any videos of me where I'm on like red equipment, like mm -hmm. from training footage, mm -hmm. that's that's the Warrior Gym. Awesome. So, awesome. Mm -hmm. That's very cool. Yeah, I'm. I when the whole thing started, um, of course, like gym equipment went sky high, like because everybody wanted, so it was super expensive. But eventually. Oh. <laughs> Eventually I was able to get some stuff in the garage and stuff like that. So now I actually have like more or less a full like gym, which is, which is really nice, you know, really? in, just in case, you know, yeah, we know. bought a couple of things like Brent and Brent, my husband. So uh -huh. like he can't externally rotate enough to squat. Mm -hmm. So we bought, we got a bar that he could squat, you know, from the, oh, from the, like the yoke, yoke type of bar. Yeah. 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 Um, so, I mean, we got a few things, but, um, but yeah, we were pretty fortunate there to have yeah. that. So mm. very cool. Very cool. So, um, what got you into just training and fitness and competing in general? Is it something that you've like always re were interested in or picked well, up? Well, I did on? the Northern, the Northern Kentucky, you know, um, mm -hmm. that was my first show and I did very well. I won my class and I won like the overall, the whole show. And I didn't even know like what that meant really mm -hmm. at all. Like you're, nationally qualified i'm like okay where do i go what do, I, do? <laughs> I don't think i did it i don't even remember if i did anything after that like i don't remember if i went i don't even i don't think i did i just was getting my feet wet i wanted yeah. to see um if i could do fitness mm -hmm. is what i so i'm like you know looking i'm studying i'm like okay fitness is the fast track to the pros because i mean at the end of the day everyone looks amazing there you go to shows and you're like Oh gosh, yeah. like they all look 10 out of 10. So um, I'm like, okay, let me just see if I can do this at all. And then, so, cause I did figure, I did just a figure show mm -hmm. and I was like, okay. So then I started training for fitness and the routine and the choreography and all that. So, mm -hmm. so for people that don't know, so are you in um, fitness now? Or are you still like uh, in figure? Like where have you decided to kind of, I don't stay? even know. I'm in between. I'm a tweenie. I um, was doing really well in women's physique. 
women's physique has changed, but now I see it changing back uh, mm-hmm. now that there's a rise in female bodybuilding. So I don't know what I am. I'm just trying to figure it out. Um, I was, you know, did very well during my women's physique reign. Um, so I'm just kind of watching that division, but it's, it's like one show I think, oh, okay, that would like favor mm-hmm. my look, you know? And then the next show I'm like, oh gosh, like, no, I don't yeah. like anything. Like that. So, um, I mean, unfortunately, I feel like that division is almost the hardest one to, um, I guess, follow some sort of standardization, you know, I, it's mm-hmm. just, it is just so. So what do you think? Did you get a chance to see um, the Olympia? Yeah, my husband Brent went. I just mm-hmm. uh, watched it some, but um, but yeah, what what well, what, what were we gonna? Well, ask I was you? gonna ask you, what do you think about you know the um, placements? I mean, we can kind of talk about the women's physique part of it. Like, did you agree with them? Did you, like like what are your thoughts on? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Like, um, I think that Sarah will have that as long as she wants. Um, I've never not seen her conditioned. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, she is so symmetrically conditioned, like head to toe, front to back, like so even her dryness Mm -hmm. and her conditioning is like so even, I don't even get it. Um, You know, it's like, whoa, like, so it's very, very impressive. Um, I, I did think though, like when Shanique was competing, um, I, I think she had that, wow factor and that you know her shape and her bubbly muscles and her crazy shape I definitely favored her overall shape right and structure but I mean you have Sarah's conditioning like there's yeah I mean nobody's gonna I I was kind of in the similar um similar boat when when she beat Shanique I watched it in pictures I didn't actually see the show itself and to mm-hmm. me, I thought I thought Shanique probably should have won. Um, I just didn't see how she got beat. Um, but this year, when I saw Sarah, I was like, oh, especially her routine was really, yeah. really good. Yeah. Um, great, great song choice, great routine. And yeah. now now I'm like, OK, I see why. Like, I still think probably Shanique should have won that show, but I see why like they picked her. She definitely has a a lot going for her. And at this point with Shanique not competing, um, I don't see anybody dethroning Sarah. So. Nope. I don't either. I don't either. So (laughs) it's um, what did you think? You know, apples, oranges, very different physiques, but equally impressive in different ways. So um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think um, your physique does, you know, does lean itself to, um, to, uh, women's physique, just because I think you carry an, enough muscle. Um, d- when you said that, that you, sometimes you look at one show and you think you're, you know, you'll fit in then another show you don't like, what are you talking structurally? Are you talking about size wise? Like w- what makes you think that you, the, you, it might not be the, you know, the division for you? Well, some shows, I feel like they do award more compact, petite, um, you know, longer, leaner, but not like lean, but not crazy lean and crazy vascular and crazy striated. So it's just like sometimes they go for that. Sometimes the winners are very much strided and very much big. I think, um, a lot of times they look like they need to be in female bodybuilding. So it's just a hard division right now. And I think it's still evolving with the rise in the female bodybuilding and trying to figure out where that is. And then, I mean, even figure like, so I started doing figure just because I'm like, well, like not to say, I mean, all divisions are like, you gotta be tight, right? Mm -hmm. You gotta be tight for all these divisions and you gotta be you know, your proportions have to be impeccable for all these divisions. But I felt like, well, at least in women's physique, when I left women's physique, I mean, it was a glute show. It 100% was every single show. If you didn't have just peeled butterfly glutes, you weren't going to get looked at. 
it didn't matter what else you had going for you. And um, so at least with figure, you know, sometimes the women that were a little softer, a little smoother, had thicker skin, you know, could still do well. Right. Um, so that's kind of, that was my thinking. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, like women's physique was, uh, was always my home for me. I didn't even like really realize it when I was in it, but if I go and look back at something that I did, um, I was just so confident in owning mm -hmm. that division. And now I'm just like <laughs> kind of scrambling around and I'm, I'm just blessed to still be able to do this sport. And, you know, um, just live the lifestyle. So I'm just yeah. focusing on my self-improvements where I want to improve on no matter stage or not stage or no matter like what division that I do. I mean, I've right. even thought about maybe going back into fitness um, and, you know, doing some of that. I, you know, I, it is really doesn't matter. Um, you know, at the end of the day, this sport is, is just, um, is going to be, it's a short window for any bodybuilder so I'm yeah. just blessed to be able to do it in yeah. some capacity um but I do regret I have a lot of regrets because looking back I'm like oh like I had a really sweet spot like I had a really good window mm -hmm. of opportunity you know yeah well I mean you never you never know um as you said like you're constantly trying to improve constantly trying to get better um you pick the right shows you know and you know it sometimes things just fall right into place I, I feel like for bodybuilding um part of it is like getting yourself into the right position like as far as your your structure and your and your right you place know, at the right time and, yeah and then the in other part the is right that <laughs> right just being just being in front of the right people because it is i mean all in all it is a subjective sport right it's not it's right. not objective i mean the only time it becomes really objective is somebody who's really off and you know you're like oh well obviously they're off but in general if everybody comes in you know in good shape which most of these shows especially high level yeah. ones they do yeah. it becomes really you know subjective thing so um, so yeah, definitely. Now, my, my question uh, earlier, I know you talked about your first show, but I wanted to ask you like how you got into weightlifting in general. Was this something that like, did your parents weightlift that like, were you no. an athlete, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I um, actually grew up right across from my old high school. Mm -hmm. And that included the field house with football players. And I would train in there. They would let me come and I'd use the track. I would train with the basketball team. I wasn't on the basketball team. Mm -hmm. um, I did a lot of training for, I was, I, I was on the soccer team. I was a cheerleader. I was a gymnast. I was a dancer. Um, so basically, I mean, I started doing that, that stuff when I was, three years old. Mm -hmm. So, um, it kind of started there. I can remember like being whenever it was on TV. Um, I can remember mimicking the moves and being in the splits and doing stuff when I was little, little, like those are some of my very first memories, um, as a child. So, um, yeah, I don't, I just think that I do still. I think I lost your sound for a second. I think I lost your sound. Sorry, what was yeah. the last thing? Oh, um, you you said you do, and then you cut out. I do, and you cut out oh, there. I probably said I do think that I am made to do this sport and born mm -hmm. to do this sport and cut out for this sport. Um, I just, um, you know, I, I, I don't know. And maybe still the best is yet to come for me, right? But I am getting right. older, and, and I am realistic. Um, so, but yeah, I, it's been, I... I very first got serious about it. When I first transitioned and got serious about it, I was actually my cheer coach put me in a couple beauty pageants and I only did good in the fitness category. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, I, I won Miss Kentucky and there was, um, I actually tied with a girl that competed and she was eating out of a Tupperware. And I was like, what are you doing? And like, what is this? And she had biceps and I was just like, very fascinated by her and so she's she was the one first one that introduced me to what bodybuilding even was and then mm -hmm. I went to a show and um I ended up dating someone that was in the scene and stuff mm -hmm. like that so everything just really fell into place and so yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. And then you just, <clears throat> excuse me, just decided to go ahead and, and start. Yeah, competing. I mean, you're, in my opinion, I, I, I mean, I think that this sport is crazy. I don't think I try to deter people from doing it in all honesty. Yeah. Um, it is just so extreme. It's so mm -hmm. extreme. And I never, I never in a million years thought I would get to the level that I did get to um, it, but it was just like, I was just like, <sighs> I mean, it was almost like I had to do it, right? right? You go to a show and you just win. I mean, I won every pro show that I did and for five years and went to the Olympia on a win. Yeah. I mean, I have to do it. You have to do it. Like yeah. you're meant to do it, you know? Like when you're so, that good, right? When you're that yeah, good, you're like I, I mean, all mad respect to these people that like really climb the ranks and like really pay their dues and put their time in and stuff. That would not have been me. Like if yeah. I was not like an automatic, like, you know, win and, and stuff, I, I don't, I could, I honestly don't think I could say that I would keep grinding, you know, for it. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, but. it's, it's interesting because it's, it's a sport that really um, prior to the show takes a lot, right? Like the prep, the suffering that you have to go through to get to that lean conditioning um, is is insane. So if you don't, if you do all that, you do it for that long, and then you place poorly, you know, yeah. it's yeah. kind of like what's going to motivate you to do it again? Yeah, you know? and yeah, like, because so your relationships suffer. Like you, everything mm -hmm. suffers. Everything suffers. I mean, you have two full time jobs if you're if you're working, you know, and all of your relationships suffer, you lose your own identity, you lose your own self, you don't even know who you are anymore. Right. I mean, really, like, it's not, it's all in all, like, I, I really, I really question some of these people that compete, I really mm -hmm. do, because I mean, it's just like, man, is that really what you should be doing? Like, right. are you really meant to do it? You know, like, I mean, yeah. I mean, it's like, yeah, you can make change and people make transformation, right? But I just think everyone has a ceiling. And some of these people, I mean, you see like literally just like you just there, you, there's a cap on how far they can go, you know? Yeah. And it's just yeah. like, man, you miss out on a lot of life. And like, you know, as long as that person is happy and they don't have regrets and stuff. But like you said, whenever you like, whenever you put your heart and soul into something and there's like little to no return back, it's just like, you can't get that time back, you can't yeah. get that investment back. And, um, so, you know, I think yeah. it, I definitely think it has a tendency to change people either for the good or the bad. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. It's something that, that, um, that most people don't really talk about, right? Like it's, it, you'll, you'll see people and then they're, they're constantly, they're competing. They're always competing, but they're never doing well. A lot of them never get their pro cards. And, and so and they're um, going broke doing it. Absolutely. And it's chasing it. And then th that's the thing. That's the other thing about bodybuilding, right? It's a, it's a very like investment heavy sport. Like you're, you invest your time, your energy and your money. And it's, Everything. it's, it's very difficult to, um, to get that back in any sort of way. What do you attribute that to? You think, uh, that people just keep coming back? Like, what is it, what is it that's making them do that? You think? I just think it's like fulfillment. I think that they're not getting fulfilled and fed in other, in other ways, you know, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, you know, I mean, well, fortunately, I guess I should say, you know, it, there is nothing on this earth that will like fulfill the need, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's like people, people make things they're god and that they lose focus on like the important stuff i mean mm -hmm. bodybuilding can just be snapped snagged right out of you you right. know i mean we see it all the time unfortunately we're seeing it a lot more lately so it's definitely um while it's a sport that has to be taken serious to do well um i think it's also a sport that requires you absolutely to not place it above everything because it can be taken away from you so quickly you yeah. know and you yeah. have nothing left so yeah all it takes is like the you know the wrong injury or or you know just just um you know a, the wrong uh you know wrong placement on a 
on, you know, in a show or, or you're, you're just, you know, you're doing things um, and then any kind of supplements or anything like that, that can affect your health as well. So it's like, there's a lot, there's a lot, you know, going into it. And it's, uh, it's one of those things that it's like, you really need to assess whether it's something that you want to really do because, yeah you know, because like you said, there is a cap, right? Like, so there's a cap and you kind of know, and, and if you don't know that there's people out there that are, have been in the sport for quite a while, they can help you understand where your cap is, you know? And yeah, yeah. Um, when I very first started competing, I went to um, like the most well-known like person, you know, at that time in my area. I mean, when I started this, there weren't like prep coaches Right. You know, like, right. I mean, she, I think had a DVD out on posing and like stuff like that, you yeah. know, but I went and met with her in person because I was like, Hey, you've been doing this. You've, you know, been a pro, like, do I have what it takes? And she was like, absolutely. Like, we need to find a show for you now. Like, right. and I, you know, I mean, I was just b myself, you know, just being, now I will go up to people like that, that I see that are just naturally, I mean, they're not, they're natural. They should right. do it. Right. Like they, I, I, I do. But then people that come to me that like, I'm like, whoo, it's going to take a lot of work for you to look like that. Like, you right. know, like maybe yeah. you should think about this goal. Um, but I will go up to people that I see that I'm like, cool. Like that's, that would be a star. Yeah. And, and, um, and how do you, how, like, how would you determine that? Like, is it just a, that their structure is already like, you know, you is evident. Yeah. And people mm -hmm. that walk around lean without even trying, you know, right. like, well, wh why not? Like, right. why not put some tan on and go see, go straight your stuff and see what you can do? Like, why not? You look like you already compete. Like, yeah. why not? You're, you, you wouldn't be sacrificing anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Like, you would just basically show up and, <laughs> and win. <laughs> go out. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. some people are just, you know, they've, they've already been doing the lifestyle and they don't really know about it. And, you know, they don't know that it's even out there and stuff. I mean, our sport is very small, so mm -hmm. there's not really a lot of hype around it. So. Absolutely. There's yeah, it's, it's amazing because it, like we think of the fitness industry being a large industry and, you know, to a degree, I guess you could say like as a, a sport wise, it's, it's not really that big because, excuse me, because like we like focus on some of these athletes like olympia champs and everything like that and we're like oh they're so like famous right but they're like they're kind of famous to us because we were in the sport and we're we're like involved in it but in reality when you ask anyone else it's like nobody's gonna know who these people are at all yeah. you know it's not yeah. like lebron it's not like lebron james like you yeah. know what i'm saying like everyone yeah, you will put it this way when there's a show going on and you want to see the results you gotta hunt for it absolutely you know it's not yeah. right there i mean it takes time to even yeah. find out like what yeah so yeah. do you um do you think you know they've been adding a lot of divisions um you know obviously they brought back women's bodybuilding um you know they added the women's physique in the last few years they added you know all kinds of men's divisions um and now they added wellness they had their first show olympia show um do you see that as like progress or so some people you know see this progress others see it as like we're kind of reducing the talent pool um what, what do you think about that um I think a little bit of both like some shows I'm like oh my gosh like that's a never-ending show like yeah. you know these shows that go on <laughs> for like four days long and they keep adding stuff I mean yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, I mean, it's, you know, it's a, it's a business, it's an yeah. industry, it's, it's making money, um, you know, and it's, it's not every, again, like I said, you know, like different people are cut out for it. Well, then that goes into a whole different, you know, different people are cut out for different divisions. You know, you cannot yeah. turn an apple to an orange. Um, so it's just like, I think it's at, it kind of has to be that way more all encompassing to, right. you know, and to be more appealing to the masses, you know, and maybe to be a more mainstream sport because, you know, there's only so much of like, you know, the, you know, kind of thing that, that people want to watch. Um, right. So you got to appeal to all crowds. 
Right. So I think it's I think it's good, and I I like all the divisions um, for different reasons, you know. So mm-hmm. I think it's good. Um, now, if it starts getting like, I'll just be honest. So when I first met my husband, and he competed during in these natural organizations, <laughs> I mean that stuff got weird. It got weird. It was like beauty pageant, like fit muscle pageant, basically. Yeah. I mean, there was like talent and and dresses and stuff, like mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Um, I really don't. I mean, it's crazy that it's gotten to what it has, and you try to think, okay, what else can they come up with? But who knows what other divisions there might be? Because I wouldn't, and you know, I wouldn't have thought of the ones we have today. So right, right. Well, the the interesting thing is, is the question comes into is the blurring between the lines, right? Like because, okay, so you know, you have women's physique and then you have women's bodybuilding and it's like they, everyone keeps getting bigger. It's like, what, you know, yeah. where's the line? Like where, you know, what are we, yeah. what are we judging? And the fact that I could go and do fitness or figure or right. women's physique, right? you know, but I'm kind of different too, because I mean, it's all about posing, right? I mean, mm. I can pose and fit those categories you know like yeah you know, so so some of it is the physique and but other is the way that you just portray the physique so that's interesting I, I've, I've never i've talked to a few people about the issue with everyone getting bigger and the blurring of the lines between divisions and no one really uh said that a lot of it can also come down to the way you you know show oh, how yeah. you look such an illusion such an illusion Oh my gosh. Like I work with Kenny Wallach and posing, you know, and, Mm -hmm. um, I mean, like on the spot, you can like make something look way tiny where it needs to, or way huge where it needs to. Mm -hmm. I mean, just angles. Right. Right. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. So uh, do, do you, um, you currently coach people as well? Yeah, not all that much. Um, just because I mean, nobody in person, really, like, um, just some online. So more so more so my husband, um, he's a school teacher. So he's got a little bit more flexibility in his schedule, and summers off and stuff. Mm-hmm. Got it. What is it? Does he coach? Uh, like, does he prep? Or does he do like lifestyle coaching? Mostly? Yeah, I mean, both. We do both, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. yeah. What do you, what do you enjoy the most? The, the lifestyle or the prep part of it? Helping people with prep? Oh gosh. So I like helping like, and we work together a lot, you know, mm-hmm. because there's a lot I know and that he doesn't, there's a lot he knows that I don't, or, right. or just that we're better at, you know, and I like all the stuff, like the beauty and the suit and the tanning and all that too, because that's super important, like super important. Yeah. So you know, um, so I feel like I have a lot to offer people in presentation in that area. Um, you yeah. know, so. huge. I mean, a huge right presentation is 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 everything. You know, just like as we just mentioned. But I mean, it's like without the proper presentation, it's like people have won and lost shows just based on oh, like yeah. how they. Oh pose, yeah. You know, that's that. Well, and ha- if they can keep it together, like right. in all honesty, um, I like for the first time have had I, I don't know what you want to call it some sort of severe stage fright type <laughs> attacks I mean I've never I've been in front of crowds my whole life you know as a cheerleader and a dancer and uh, a gymnast competing I mean mm-hmm. it was always the bigger the better like bring it on and um I tell you why me switching back to heels and that was the most relieving too is when I went to women's physique I'm like no more heels because <laughs> I mean it is already nerve-wracking you're already like you know you're a nervous wreck like just because of right. the whirlwind of the event not even if you're nervous it's like it's just it's nervous energy because mm-hmm. it's like I mean, especially for women, like we got to be up. Like, that's why I don't do all that, that most people do. Cause I just can't handle it. I can't yeah. get it. I can't have a 3 a.m. hair appointment and a 4 a.m. makeup appointment, a 5 a.m. tanning appointment and all that. So that's why I do yeah. pretty much my own stuff because it stresses me out too much. But, um, so yeah, yeah it was, I was going with that, <laughs> well, no, actually, you <laughs> oh, opened- I know what I was going to say. Go I was just going to say, so, um, like for me getting back in the heels and working on that presentation, like, 
I mean, I was getting better and I've gotten better as it's went on, but I mean, I had some major attacks on stage Mm -hmm. to where I literally felt like I had stilts. My legs were stilts and I had no control over them. And it was the weirdest thing ever. And I mean, I know the judges, I know these Mm -hmm. people in the crowd. It's not, it's, it's just a different, this wasn't just like, I'm nervous. I'm shaky. Like Mm -hmm. this was like, I don't even understand. This was like all mental, like, um, I think it goes back to some different past experiences that I had in fitness. Mm. And um, so it was just like, I don't know, psychological anxiety and panic and stuff. You so, said you had some experiences in fitness that were, I guess, yeah, that were bad. Negative. That were bad. So, like, what I kind of, and I kind of have. Like, you know, I'm kind of in a bad habit too of when I pose of flexing really hard to the point of mm-hmm. shaking. Mm-hmm. And then I honestly, to be quite honest, um, I'm seeking a neurologist out for some things that I have going on muscle twitch wise um, okay. and fasciculation wise that, um, and I've got different markers for my um, brain without getting into things. I've got some workup that I'm doing on myself mm-hmm. to figure out things that's going on with me that's right. gotten progressively worse so um yeah I mean I don't really I can't sit here today and tell you this is what happened I just know that these past few years I've had to really work through the mental keeping it together on stage mm. in that presentation in those hills with those lights with those smells with those I mean, your amygdala remembers all of these things, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. So if you freaked out one time, it's always in the back of your head, like, you know, and the more you're like, don't freak out, don't freak out, you know, the more it brings it to the surface. So I've had to really, I mean, I never worked with a sports psychologist or anything. Mm-hmm. Um, I probably, or I definitely could have benefited from that yeah. um, these past few years, but I think, I think I've, I've done pretty well. Um, it just made me really just like revert back to my faith and Mm -hmm. just like know that like you know like not to make things such a big deal you know we place so much pressure on ourselves and then it comes to that clutch moment of when you're supposed to you know show what you've achieved and you just let it all I mean it's like that in any sport you know the pressure can get so great that you just blow it yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it's tough because as you were talking about that and you mentioned fitness, um, there was a young lady, um, who I believe it's her first Olympia, if I'm not mistaken in fitness this, this year, and she's from the UK, I believe her name is Alexis, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, but she was doing her routine and there was a couple of times where she fell. Um, and it, it, you just, I feel like, you look and it almost like hurts you, even though I'm not there and I, I have no connection to her whatsoever, but just the mm-hmm. fact that, you know, mm-hmm. that this person has worked, has dieted, mm-hmm. has put themselves through, you know, you mm-hmm. know, all kinds of s- struggle and suffering yeah. to get there. And then, you know, and then to have that kind of outcome, it's, it just, mm-hmm. it makes me cringe when I saw it, you know? Yeah. It's devastating. And then you feel it too. Like there's been times when you know I can totally relate because you feel it I've seen it and I've seen people and you're like oh it hurts to watch them right now just hurry up get through it come on you got it you know and then when you're the person that it's happening to and you're falling apart you're just like (laughs) oh man I know it's me right now like let me just get try to get through this and you just want to run off stage yeah and it's just like it's I mean it happens it's life you know but um yeah, definitely. That's a hard one to hit home. And yeah. if, you know, people that have struggled with that, um, yeah. you know, like, like, you know, I mean, I, there was everything for a reason, right? Like, mm-hmm. I don't know why, but um, I know that I was able to grow from it and, you know, improve and empower myself and not let, you know, it's all about, it's just mind. It's right. just your mind. You can get into your head so much that you can just literally just do yourself such disservice from yeah. like focusing on the wrong thing or just getting so overwhelmed, you know, and it's like, no, like we have power. Um, you know, it's just, it's again, going back to that, you know, what's, 
what's the bigger, what's the bigger thing, who's in control, what's right. in control, you know, because I mean, none of us control, control any of the outcomes at right. a show. It, right. Like, I mean, my suit fell off, like my suit completely broke in the middle of the Arnold oh, no. that I was going to go back, you know, after the year I won, like yeah. <laughs> the next year, like, I mean, everything at that show, everything that could go wrong did go wrong. And there's mm-hmm. always <laughs> like, there's just always going to be those times when you're like, man, I'm in the total wrong place at the total wrong time, but here I am. Right. Like, let's make the most of it, move on. Like, you know. Yeah. What's that, what's that phrase that they say? It's, it's like uh, 10% is, you know, like what happens to you. It's like 90% is like how you react to it. So yeah, a lot yeah. of times your mental toughness comes out when bad things happen. Cause if everything goes well, it's like, there's no, you know, you really don't have an opportunity to be mentally tough but when things mm-hmm. go wrong that's exactly. when you're like you, you know you kind of work through exactly. it so exactly and just like that person you were talking about you know I mean when that happened to me like as a routine and like doing you know as a cheerleader and a gymnast and um I did even did like traveling stuff like that was when you practice and you messed up that's that's why it was so important your coaches would like push you to keep going no matter what so when you're in the middle of a routine and you mess up like only you know you mess up but until you start drawing attention to it really you know what I mean or if you mess up but then you redeem yourself you know you can still get it back right it's when you start crumbling throughout the whole thing or give up or run off or whatever like so as long as you like train for that um it makes it you know a lot a lot more um like you can still win the day yeah yeah (laughs) still make it manageable yeah for sure yeah yeah Yeah, instead of it like in you can still like take ownership of that moment and own however it went and however it happened instead of it taking over you, you know? Right. right. And that's, so. that's really the, like the championship uh, champion mindset that you could say it's the, it's, it's that right there. It's basically being able to, to deal with adversity. And it's like people that can't deal with it. Usually they don't, they don't do well um, at anything really, you know, you have to be able to learn to deal with adversity. So um, it's just part of it, part of moving forward, whether it's in the sport or just in general life, you know, you're always going to have things that come up that, that kind of stump you or, or throw you off your, you know, your path, but, but it's the, it's the ability to, to take it and then just keep moving forward. um, Mm -hmm. You know, that, that allows you that kind of progression in life. So for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, so to kind of, I know we've been talking for a little bit now, but to kind of tailor it to the end, I was going to ask you, so now with you, um, with you kind of being in between like three divisions and you're, you know, you're essentially, I guess, working with what you said before is like working, improving, um, like what are your immediate goals as far as like improvement? Are you trying, is there a particular body part that you're trying to bring up? Um, you know, is there, is there anything like concrete or are you just, are you just training, you know, just improving everything? Yeah. Um, I am, I am definitely prioritizing my areas that need it. Um, my back has always been a weak point of mine. Like even like my first Olympia, which was still my favorite look, it's the best I've ever done. I got fifth. But when I critiqued myself, when I watched that, I was like, oh, Mm -hmm. you got to get your back bigger, like big time, like, you know, and so, you know, everyone has that body part that's stubborn, right? And for me, it's my back. Um, So I know what to do. It's also first to kind of go away too, Mm -hmm. you know, dieting and stuff. Um, So I, you know, I, I, um. I know what to do to, to, and where, you know, and it's, let me back up a little bit because Mm -hmm. it's all to a matter of like ongoing assessment, right. And balance and where you're at. So like the biggest, probably number one for me has been getting too fat in the off season. And I never intend to do that. 
I, I don't have a bulk. I don't bulk. I never have bulked. Um, it just happens. Right. Yeah. And, um, for the last three years, I've literally went on like a biggest loser type of transformation. I mean, mm. I've lost 50 plus pounds to compete wow. and that's ridiculous. Yeah. That's ridiculous on my frame. That's ridiculous. I sh it should, it should never get that out of control. So when that happens, right, you're going to be struggling to get the fat off of certain areas and then preserve the muscle in other areas and then get the cellulite off here and keep the fullness here and the, all, right. do all of these things. And it's almost impossible. Um, it really is. So number one is staying leaner. Um, I, I have, since my show, have weighed myself every day. And I have really, I mean, I, I tell people not to focus on a number for, but for me, I know that I need to focus on a number right? right. Um, because I know how my numbers have gone, you know, and how it's gotten out of control. Like it's a yeah. slow creep, like, Oh, you know, eh, I haven't hit that ne next 10 pound. I've, I'm still okay. Well, then I hit it and yeah. then, Oh, the next, you know, it's been two lakhs for me. Yeah. And so I told myself, you know, uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm giving myself some lead way, right? Because my body is still fluctuating. I mean, I just had my first cycle, like for, I haven't had one in a year, over mm. a year, you know? So, yeah. I mean, I'm still giving myself grace. I'm still giving myself, you know, like some flexibility and breathing room and, um, you know, because, but frankly, for the first time, I haven't been burned out because normally after I get done with competing for the season, mm -hmm. I'm so burned out that I don't want to live the lifestyle. I don't right. want to eat right. I don't want to do cardio. I don't want to exercise. I don't want to do any of it. Yeah. I hate all of it. And I don't want to have anything to do with it. That's, and yeah, and I don't. And it's not that I go that opposite. Like, I don't even take that big of a break. But. I always take a break this time. I'm just listening to my body. I mean, I I've been taking more days off, you know, throughout the week, but, um, I haven't had any crazy, you know, like I've still done based on the number, based on yeah. what my weight is. I've still kept some cardio in mm -hmm. like in a healthy way. You know, I've still based on what my number is, I've still, you know, carb cycled and things. And based on what my number is, I've still, um, you know, I, I'm just letting that be more of a priority for me right, to focus right. on because I know what number I can compete at yeah. and look good. And I know, too, I haven't even achieved like even though I have some accolades. Right. I haven't even achieved, though, fully what I know that I can, because mm -hmm. when I look around at shows and I see people lean like head to toe in a certain way I know that it's achievable it's right. out there there's yeah. people all around me backstage they're doing it it's proof yeah. now is it something that they're doing to get that way that I would not be doing to ever get that way mm -hmm. maybe but I don't feel like I've given myself a fair chance at doing that because I haven't stayed lean enough right. like basically ever since probably I mean every ever since I would say I mean, at least the last three years, it's gotten out of control and it's gotten to yeah. the point where I'm unhappy. Um, I bring it into my family. I bring it into my work. I bring it into all my relationships. It doesn't serve me. Yeah. It doesn't serve me. So that, you know, that little bit of satisfaction after shows and things, that little bit of, of indulging, like is just not, it's not been worth it. Yeah. So, um, well, I give I myself once a week, you know, mm -hmm. and I have, I have limits. Right. Well, it's, <laughs> so. it's, yeah, it sounds like you're, you're taking the right approach because, um, you know, as you mentioned, by the time you get done with the season, usually you hate everything. And if yeah, you hate everything, and it's just like autumn, you know. what are you doing? Because the, the off season is the important season. Right. Right. That's when, and I building. have never prioritized it like that. Never. Right. I've right. always been off season on season and I have never and I it was just like so plain as day this past yeah. year and I'm just like what are you doing like yeah. 
like, you know, I think because I at least have been good enough everywhere that I haven't really, you know, some of these people that compete and they've, they've had, you know, I had a really long base of this. Like I've been doing this for over 20 years. So like I, you know, even though there's things now like that, I know that I need to work on, but it was like, I was good enough everywhere to not have to do that. You know what I mean? Or at least like really focus really hard on making those improvements. But now, now that, you know, I mean, every year more and more freaks come out, the bars raise more and more. I mean, it's just to a whole new level. I mean, if you really stop and think about it, like, so I'm 37. So if you really stop and think about it, like, I mean, I'm competing against 20 year olds, right? Mm -hmm. And if you stop and think about how every year culture like gets better and better as far as like you know, people being more health conscious and knowing more and doing more. I mean, think about the genetics of those people every year, you know, their parents, what their parents are doing, you know, I mean, how I grew up, like, you know, I'm, my parents didn't know a (laughs) fat carbohydrate and, you know, same way, same year. So it's like, wow, not only are they educated and empowered that way, but they are a breed like they are you know genetically superior because they came from you know more healthy and um you know more primed bodies yeah yeah. right well that's i mean um, and there's the advancement of you know just bodybuilding itself and technology itself and everything right absolutely so there's so many advances to think about and it's like you know it just really hit me for whatever reason this year and yeah. And um, I know that um, I need to work on my back. I don't think you can ever have big enough shoulders and then just keeping my glutes lean and developing them um, and seeing what I can truly bring. Because I know it sounds silly. It sounds so stupid, but we all, I think, have like that one thing that keeps us going. And I have for the longest time, even before strided glutes were a thing, I have always been like, enamored by them like wow like how is that even achievable you know and I've always I've always my body's I won't say never done that I mean not my glutes are leaner than 99.9 percent of people right Mm -hmm. but in terms of bodybuilding like I've always that I've always strived for that and my body hasn't done it like enough to where that I feel like I'm on the same level as everyone else so you know and I, I think Everyone says like, you know, I mean, even my husband, I watched him like not have always striated glutes and then now he has them like year round, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's it like for him, like it was doing nothing different. It was just more time and it was staying leaner year round. Like he stays really lean year round. Like that's, I think so. that's, yeah, I think that's the key. Even like for myself, I noticed um, I was just. I would get really heavy, um, like in the winter time for really no apparent reason. I stopped bul- bulking years ago. Um, you know, I'm, I'm about your age. I'm, I'm 36. So, you know, I kind of stopped doing that as I, as I've gotten older. So, but I still would gain a significant amount of weight. Um, and so, and then, like you said, it's just, it's, it's not, you don't feel good. You don't look good. Um, you know, and I, and then I kept telling myself that, oh, well, I'm just like, I'm adding more mass, but in reality, I was just adding more fat. Like that's, that's yeah. really what it was. It was your life hell. After right. That. Right. So like, it was yeah. like, it was zero fun. Like bodybuilding has been zero fun. And it used to be so fun. Yeah. It used to be so fun because my metabolism was really good. And I did little to no cardio because I, mm. I was in fitness and I did that routine. Like I didn't need cardio. Right. Um, I ate whatever I wanted to one day a week on Saturdays. And I'm talking, it went down <laughs> and I looked forward to that. That was my reward. I mean, and I would do it until I stopped losing and yeah. I would do it all the way up until shows. I would do it a week out like all the time, like, like for years, because it was working, it worked. Yeah. yeah. But then when you, when I got, you know, too out of shape, it did not work at all. Uh, and I could not even look at a carb without, you know, gaining a crap ton. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I mean, there's a lot, you know, I'm just, 
trying to reverse a lot of damage, a lot of stuff that I knew now, you know, or that I know now that I didn't then. I mean, yeah. you know, I never was a big salt person. I never salted anything. And then it's like, oh, you know, your thyroid runs on salt. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I, you know, wish I knew or, that. Yeah. Oh, you have to have carbs for your thyroid to function correctly. Like, yeah. oh, yeah. okay. Like, you know, there's so much we know now and I have new ethics now and I have sure. muscle egg now and I, you know, I, um, I'm, I'm working with what I got, you know, you can't, um, you can't take back everything, but there's a lot of knowledge that's still yet to even be discovered, you know? Um, Absolutely. So, but yeah, it's like, that's, you know, even when you're in it, you don't always know these things, you know, and even as a healthcare prof professional, I mean, you don't always know these things because science is always um you know that's right. what science is, is yeah it's is always ongoing. changing yeah it's always it's changing improving you know things that yeah. they, they know now they didn't know before yeah. you know yeah. so it's always you know moving yeah. and then all the rest you know that's right. that's being discovered you know i'm wearing my polar watch on the hrv stuff you know mm -hmm. and how that is yeah. and all this you know i think I've just, um, you know, been very old school in my approach and just driving, you know, even though I thought I was working harder and it, I was getting no payoff, it was not working smarter, you know, right, right. I mean, I'm telling you these times when I've gained all this weight, it wasn't that I, I mean, I, I mean, have there been times when like I should have, yeah, but not that much, you know, mm -hmm. but I just, I really ruined, I've ruined my metabolism over the years. I don't want to say ruined. But right. I have, I'm working myself out of a hole. Right. Well, and, you've also, you've also gotten older, right? Like, and that's, it's right. kind of like you and me both are in the same boat. It's like, there's okay. things that I could have, could do when I was 20 that I can't do now at 36, you know? So right. Right. it's, it's right. one of those things. So, right. Right. But it, it just takes time, you know, it takes time and patience and consistency and just seeing it through, you know, I mean, yeah. I may never. I may never um, get back to, you know, what I think I can, but I can at least try and get to a certain portion of it, or I could even surpass it, Absolutely. you know, yeah. you know, I, I don't know. I don't know because, you know, I mean, you can look at it both ways. You can look at the whole, you know, muscle maturity, you know, over, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, triumphing, but I, um, I definitely haven't prioritized my off season and I'm definitely doing that now and I'm hoping it's not too late. And if it is, so what, like I'm having fun, I'm yeah. living the lifestyle of how, you know, it used to be whenever I first started bodybuilding, it was very intentional. Everything was very intentional. I mean, I, um, you know, and that's another thing too, is when you first start competing and, and, and dieting like this, you are a afraid to go off plan like you don't deviate right yeah. but over the years you're like hmm, I can get by with this I can get yeah. by with that I can skip that I can sure. you know you cut corners yeah. you do or at least I have and um you know because nobody uh, I mean we're all just human right like you can't be perfect and you can't be on all the time right. some people can so, and those people are the Mr. And Mrs. Olympias, right? Yeah, they have so, to be, yeah. You know, they have to be, but I feel like still, even them, like we are all human. And so you have to have that balance of like what works for you to get like that, you know? Absolutely. So, um, so yeah, I'm in a really good place, I, even though I don't know what I'm doing or if <laughs> I'm doing, but um, I'm just living my life and thriving. Well, so. that hey, that's that's the best thing you could be doing, actually. So, so you, it sounds like you got it figured out at least at least that part of it, you know. And what you compete in, you know, that's something that you can always figure out you know, as time goes on. But yeah, and um, if, I, if if nothing else, you know, I I have, you know, I went really far, and I have a lot to be proud of. I but I I haven't hit my personal goals or what right. I can close my eyes and foresee for myself because yeah. I knew know that um, I was meant to do this. I, I have what it takes to do this. Um, I just have to better apply myself. And I know that, you know, I have great shape. I have mm -hmm. great roundness and proportions and all of that. Um, I just have to get lean and dry enough, you know, and yeah. I think that will just come with me staying leaner and drier. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's just so you don't have to drop all that weight right before, yeah. you know, so. and sacrifice, make more sacrifices throughout the year. 
Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, it, it would be like, I held all my sacrifice, like, you know, it was like a sacrifice for all of those months. And then it was like, I had no more to sacrifice. Right, right. So trickling that in all the time, you know, and having that self-discipline all the time, yeah. you know, is important. So Yeah. I think, I think you said, said that in an interesting way. It's like, you can, you can, you're going to say, if you're going to compete, you're going to have to sacrifice. So you can either sacrifice a little bit throughout the year. Or you can, you're going to wait and sacrifice a lot right, right before. Right. And so, of course, the more superior way to do it, the most health conscious and happy way to do it is a little bit. Yeah, you know, because you're going to have to give it, right? right? So how do you want to spend it? Right, absolutely. Well, Autumn, I really appreciate, again, you coming on the show. If someone wanted to reach out to you um, for any advice or coaching, anything like that, what would be the best way for them to do that? Um, so my email is autumn, A-U-T-U-M-N, Swanson, S-W-A-N-S-E-N, at gmail.com. And then my Instagram is autumn, I-F-B-B. And then my Facebook is just autumn Swanson again. Okay. So Awesome. Awesome. Again, thank you so much. I know you're very busy. You've got, you know, everybody in the medical profession right now is, is extremely busy. And so I know you're, you know, you're in that boat too. So I appreciate your hard work there and appreciate your time here with me. Thank you so much. Yeah. Glad we were able to finally get it done. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you take care. Have a good day. You too. Good night, I guess. <laughs>